Hey everyone, it's Allie and welcome to my channel, Cozies and Classics, where we talk about books all day long. Basically heaven, right? So, so far on my channel, I've really just put out some book reviews and so you can expect that on here if you are new, as well as cozy vlogs. I've got a couple coming up and today I'm really excited because I'm going to be opening a mystery box, actually two mystery boxes of books. So if you aren't familiar, I actually do have a main channel, which is just my name, Allie Lee. And on that channel, I open a lot, a lot of mystery boxes of clothes. That's kind of what that channel is centered around. So if you like mystery boxes in general, go ahead and check that out. But so of course, because I love myself a good mystery, I did want to see if I could find any good ones for books. And I had looked around for a while before, and a lot of times I would find really great prices for boxes, and then I would see the shipping would be like $50. Absolutely crazy. But then I was poking around on Etsy and I found this shop called Neverland Books and they had free shipping. So I did end up buying a box from their shop on Etsy and that box was 10 pounds of random adult fiction. And they have lots of different genres that you can choose from. I just decided to go with adult fiction so it could be kind of fun and random. And that box was originally $24 and I ended up getting it for $20 $21.60. So really one of the best deals for mystery boxes of books I have ever found. But then even better than that, after I had ordered that box, I realized that the Neverland Books actually had their own website. And so I was poking around on there and I saw that they are a little bit cheaper on their website compared to Etsy. And so of course I had to get another box straight from their website. This one is popular fiction. So again, 10 pounds, and this time I only paid $20. So in total, I paid only $41 for both boxes. One box again is just random adult fiction, and then another one is popular fiction. So that's the one I'm expecting better from, but all in all, this will just be a lot of fun, and hopefully I will find some good books. Okay, so I really actually don't know which box is which, but just peeking in to this first one, I'm thinking that it is the random fiction, but who knows really. And just from me peeking in here really quick, it looks like there probably are at least like 10 to 12 books Okay, sorry, I had to put away some groceries, but yes, I will figure out the cost of goods per book at the end when I know how many books I have. Let's go ahead and open up our first box. This one is called A Heartbreaking Work of Staggering Genius by Dave Eggers, and it does say that it was a national bestseller. Okay, this is so interesting. So the back, you flip it, so it's right side up, and it says, mistakes we knew we were making, and there is like part of the book that is upside down after that part, but it's not very long. So I'm not really sure, that's very interesting. But I can already tell this is going to be a quirky book. There's some parts that are written quite different than a normal novel, so I am excited to read this. Up next we have definitely a older copy of The Woman's Day Book of Household Hints. Let's see when this was from. 1978, that's pretty cool. Let's just flip to a random hint. General sewing hints, I need that. Store used patterns in plastic bags instead of trying to fit them back into the envelopes. Thank you for that helpful hint. <laughs> Travel tips. A king-size pillowcase makes a good sheet for an infant's car bed. If the child spits up, the mattress can be turned and used on the other side. Kind of gross, but yeah, I guess so. I will definitely peruse this. I wish this was like a nicer copy because this would be a cool book to display. You can see I have like some books displayed there. So this would be a fun one to display, but since it's just a paperback, I'll probably just kind of look through it and then donate. Here is a hardback. This is The Big Wake Up by Mark Coggins. And this says it is number five in the August Rorden series. Haven't read any of those, so this might be a little bit difficult to read <laughs> if it is the fifth in a series. But I'll kind of look a little bit more into this. If it can be read on its own, then I will go ahead and read it. But yeah, it definitely was like an old library book. Another older one, this is a hardback. This is The Revenge of the Robbins Family. One murder already solved to show you how. Oh, this is so funny. So it says on the back, there's these two guys holding a check and it says, Bill Adler and Thomas Chastain hold the check for $10,001 that will be presented to the person who submits the best solution 
to the mystery of the revenge of the Robbins family. This will be awarded on August 15th, 1985. So unfortunately we have missed the deadline, but I don't know if it's like there's this whole story in here and then you have to write your own ending, but that is really cool. I'm excited to look more into this. This is such a fun idea. Here is a hardback called The Lost Bird by Margaret Cool, I believe, missing the dust cover. I weirdly cannot find the year on this, so I'm not sure when this is from, but it just looks like a novel. <laughs> Sorry, I can't really say too much more about it. Another one, definitely from a library, the Buchanan Library, wherever that is. It says The Many Lives of John Stone by Linda Buckley Archer. It says Stella Park, Spark for short, has found summer work cataloging historical archives in John Stone's remote and beautiful house in Suffolk, England. Ooh, England. I like reading books there. Spark's uncertainty about living at Stowney House only increases upon arriving. What kind of people live in the 21st century without using electricity, telephone service, or even a washing machine? Additionally, the notebook she's organizing spans centuries, but are written in the same hand. Something strange is going on. Who exactly is John Stone? What connection does he have to these notebooks? So that sounds good. I'm excited to read this one. Pretty thick too. And we've got a murder mystery, Murder at Markham, a mystery by Patricia Hauk Sprinkle. <laughs> cool last name. I do like the cover. This definitely was a library book as well. We'll definitely give that one a read. This one is actually a nonfiction book, it looks like. It's called Finding Your Way, Discovering the Truth About You, Dan Webster and Randy Gravitt. <laughs> so yeah, it's kind of just like uh, learning more about yourself, finding more about what to do with your life. I'll definitely peruse this. It's very, very dusty though. <laughs> Looks like this is actually just from 2013. And it might have even been kind of like a self-published situation, not sure, but sure, I'll give it a read. I'm trying to read more nonfiction, honestly. But yeah, a lot of these are very dusty, so if you have heavy dust allergies, you might not want to order this box. This is called Las Vegas Is My Beat by Ralph Pearl. So this looks like this is actually nonfiction as well. Stories within this book talking about Las Vegas and how it came about, I think, is what this is. So a couple more books in this box. This is The Cat Who Talked to Ghosts by Lillian Jackson Braun. I would have picked this up at Goodwill 100%. It says, are ghosts really haunting the Goodwinter Farmhouse Museum? Quill doesn't think so, although Iris Cobb, his former housekeeper and current curator of the museum, believes otherwise. So another little kind of mystery story. We've had a lot of mysteries so far. And then the last one, I don't know if I'll read this or not. It says, Detective Fiction, a collection of critical essays. <laughs> so I'm not sure if this is kind of like a collection of thesis type materials. If that's the case, I probably won't read this. I'm not that interested in detective fiction. So that was box one. If I counted correctly, I think I got 10 books. So that would make each book about $2 a piece. Not too bad. Okay, now let's open this other box. This should be the popular fiction. I don't think all of that was popular fiction necessarily. Okay, this one is called My Golden Trade Stories by Ivan Klima. Talks about life under communism. <laughs> I guess so. Yeah, I mean, we'll look into this. It looks like it is focusing on different people, maybe a bunch of short stories. Okay, next we have Ben Hur by Lou Wallace. I've never read this actually. I don't necessarily like love <laughs> this cover. I probably wouldn't keep this, even if I like absolutely end up loving this book. I would probably just get another copy. But this is kind of cool. So on the back it says, famous atheist. Robert Ingersoll challenged Lou Wallace to prove that Christ was the son of God. Ben-Hur was the result. And through the writing, Wallace became a Christian. So that is really awesome as a Christian. But this is definitely one that has kind of been in the back of my mind as something that would be cool to read. I'm trying to read more classic books. This one is called Left Behind, a novel of the Earth's last days. It was a New York Times bestseller by Tim LaHaye and Jerry B. Jenkins. I'm not necessarily the biggest fan of like sci-fi, post-apocalyptic type stories. So we'll see if I end up liking this very much, but I probably will still read it. Oh, we got a four for one. So does this count as four or one? This is just kind of a collection of popular books. So we've got Safe Haven by Nicholas Sparks, The Century, Robert Crace, an Irish Country Courtship, Patrick Taylor, and The Province Cure for the Brokenhearted by Bridget Asher. So yeah, I mean, it's like not the cutest book itself because it's just a collection of stories, but I've actually never read any of these. So 
I will definitely go ahead and read them. This would be a wonderful book to take on vacation with you because the print is kind of small. They've kind of like shoved the stories in here. So I'll probably save this for like a long weekend trip or something like that where I want to read at least a couple books. This book was a part of Oprah's book club. It's called Where the Heart Is by Billy Letts. I've actually never even heard of this one. It says, talk about unlucky sevens. An hour ago, 17 year old, seven months pregnant, Novelty Nation was headed for California with her boyfriend. Now she finds herself stranded at a Walmart in Oklahoma with just $7.77 in changed. But Novelty is about to discover hidden treasures in this small Southwest town, a group of down to earth, deeply caring people willing to help a homeless, jobless girl living secretly in a Walmart. That alone is interesting to me. This story is called Captivating by John and Stacy Eldridge. This looks like a story about Christianity, just a Christian woman going throughout her life is what I'm getting. So it's interesting that I've gotten like a few Christian based books, but I appreciate it. Oh, this is funny. So I have actually read this book before, but it was a long time ago. My mom has this book. So this is John Grisham's Playing for Pizza. I'm not sure how old this book is, but it's definitely been a while. And it looks like I actually got a signed copy. That's pretty cool. So yeah, this was written back in 2007 and I probably read it around that time. So it is time for a reread. This is one I wouldn't mind having. I think that it is a cool story. If I remember correctly, it's like about a guy who plays football over in Europe and kind of just his journey of self-discovery. So I will definitely give this a reread. Okay, got a couple more books in here. This one is the Mark, The Beast Rules the World, another book by Tim LaHaye and Jerry B. Jenkins. There they are, look at those buddies. Uh, just the first sentence really threw me off. It says, His Excellency Global Community Pontinate Nicolae Carpathia is back, this time as Satan. So this is interesting. I'm not really sure if these are gonna be the authors for me. But again, this is like another Christian-based book, I guess. So this is super interesting because one of the reviews says, Tim LaHaye and Jerry B. Jenkins are doing for Christian fiction what John Grisham did for courtroom thrillers. So yeah, another, I guess, Christian-based book. And then actually the last one is another book by those two guys. It says, Assignment Jerusalem, Target, Antichrist Assassins. And this is number six in the Left Behind series. So these ones are a little bit disappointing. I got three from these two authors. So if I don't really like these books, and they don't necessarily sound like my vibe, that kind of is a bit of a bummer. From that popular fiction box, I was expecting a little bit better. I think maybe like a little bit more modern popular fiction, but overall I think these boxes were a lot of fun. So in total, I did end up getting 20 books. So each box had 10 books, pretty good deal. So I think it's fun to get mystery boxes. However, it probably would be better if you just want cheap books to go ahead and go to your local thrift store where you can pick out the books yourself for either a dollar or two most of the time. And so just because of that, because this isn't the best use of my money, I probably won't get these boxes again. But I am a huge lover of mystery boxes. I think they are a lot of fun. And I will say that these came really, really quickly, I believe from Virginia. But if you like the idea of mystery boxes, book mystery boxes, definitely let me know and I can look into getting some from other companies or maybe more from this company in the future. And if you did like the video, please make sure to give me a big thumbs up and subscribe really does help my channel out a lot and it will help me grow. And let me know if you have any other ideas for me here on this channel. I really want to make a lot of very cozy bookish content. Thanks again for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.